In this video, I'll be going over the explanations of my solutions to uh, the problems in Lead Code Weekly Contest 181. And as you can see, I got second, but unfortunately, I forgot to record when I was doing the contest, so I'm only doing the explanations. So for the first problem, you just need to uh, choose the right data structure in uh, your uh, in the language that you're using. So for example, in C++, you can use a vector and basically supports inserting elements, uh, inserting numbers at any index in the array. So you just do that for all the elements and you return the uh, final answer. For the second problem, we want the sum of the divisors of the integers in the array that have exactly four divisors. And uh, the first thing we need to do is for each of the integers, we need to find uh, their divisors. And if you look at the constraints, if we use a linear time algorithm for factoring the integers, it's going to be too slow because we'll end up using up to 10 to the 9 operations. So instead, we'll use uh, the standard uh, O squares of n time algorithm for factoring. So basically, we loop through each j such that j is less than or equal to the square root of the number. And if j is, uh, if the number is divisible by j, then that means j is a, j is a divisor. So we add one to the count of the, of the divisors and we add j to the sum. And also, the number divided by j will also be a divisor. So we add one to the count again, and we add this divisor to the sum. But these two numbers, they will only be different if uh, this is true. So that's why we need this if statement here. If j times j is exactly equal to the number, then this divisor will be the same. So we shouldn't count it again. And lastly, if the count of the if the count of the divisors is exactly four, then we add the sum of the divisors to the total sum, and then we return the total sum. So for problem three, uh, the first thing we do is we'll uh, model this grid as a graph. So the nodes are the cells, and we have an edge between two cells if we can get from one cell to the other. and once we have the graph, uh, it's pretty easy to determine if we can go from the top left corner to the bottom right. We just run uh, depth of first search on the entire graph. So the main problem is how do you construct the graph? And you can use a lot of casework, but the way I did it was might seem a bit complicated, but it's uh, it doesn't have that much casework. So. Uh, that's why I chose to implement this way. So to start out, to start off, I have these uh, of arrays di and dj. Di means the the increase in i for each direction. So for the first direction, it, the first direction is down. So i increases by one, and j remains the same. The second direction is up. So i decreases by one, and j remains the same. And then the third direction is right and the fourth direction is uh, left so if you, over here i loop from for k from 0 to 4 and basically uh, in each iteration of this loop i'm checking to see if the direction k works and if i can cut dfs to a new cell and the new cell will have the coordinates i plus di of k and j plus dj of k Okay, so uh, now we need to check if uh, the streets have different different types. So we need to make sure that the type of the current cell and the new cell uh, will be such that we can go from the current cell to the new cell. So uh, over here, I have six. Uh, I have an array of six integers, and uh, it's six because there are six types of streets and yeah, six types of streets. And each integer uh, is a bit mask, and the bit mask represents the subset of directions that 
uh, you can have from st the street. So the first element is the subset of directions you can have from the first street. So for the first street, you can either go left or right. And left represents, left is direction four and right is direction three. So the, uh, the integer will be uh, to represent the set, including uh, to represent the set with the third and fourth directions, we set the third bit and the fourth bit in the binary representation of the set to true. And we do this for all six trees. So here, I need to make sure that k is in the subset of directions of the current cell. Now, the way I do this is using this expression. So this expression is true if k is not a subset of uh, the subset t. So if k is not uh, in the subset, then we just continue. Then k2 represents the opposite direction. So when we go from, when you try to go right from here, we also need to make sure that we can go left from the new cell to the old cell. So k2 is the opposite direction and it's equal to kx or 1. And I ordered the directions in a way so that the opposite direction will be kx or 1. Now we do the same check for the new cell. And yeah. And the other stuff is pretty standard uh, DFS stuff. So if we reach the target cell, we return true. And we also need to make sure you don't visit, visit cells twice. And uh, yeah, if we don't visit any cells, which can uh, go to the target cell, then we, we return false. Okay, so for the last problem, I don't like this problem a lot because it is a direct application of the prefix function. So the prefix function, uh, uh, the prefix function of i is the length of the longest proper prefix of the substring from zero to i, which is also a suffix of, of this substring. So once we calculate the prefix function, which I do in my code here, the length of the longest prefix of the entire string, which is also a suffix, is just uh, the last element in the prefix function. And I just take the substring of this. So, and I won't be explaining the prefix function, but I'll include a link in the description if you don't uh, know about this. So this is it for solutions. If you found this helpful, then feel free to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, then uh, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.